Right, well, I'll go and busy myself about things on the motorboat, and Fabian will show you, give you a guided tour of the rest of the boats. Right, let's go down the front of the tunnel. Everybody knows that the Grand Union boats are all identical. They're not. <laughs> the butting on the inside was built by Holland and Wolf at Woolwich in 1935. The link on the outside was built by Yarwoods of Northridge in 1936. And you can see that the structure of the stem posts, which is mm -hmm. that lot, is different. Coming back from the stem posts, that's just because of the peculiarities of the yard formula and the way they've like the guys to form the steel. They're all riveted, as you see. Um, the fore end has a locker called fore end locker, and each boat has a headlight. That bit, commonly referred to as the cratch, is actually the deck board. The cratch is the assembly behind it. As you can feel there there is a structure. These have actually been screwed together. They shouldn't have been really. The idea was that the cratch assembly collapses when you hit the bridge, which inevitably will happen. Um, the hold starts there and runs back the full length of the boat, as you see. In many boats, even in full working days, that bit was screened off and used for storage, loo, whatever, whatever it might have been. And actually, in both these boats, we've got a, a, a storage space that we'll have a look at in a moment. So you come back through the cloths, the mast. The mast is the big box inside there, is, is, is the mast box. That, that is the mast, which was customarily um, used when horse boating, raised to different heights with a pin. Um, butties were in, in paired boating almost entirely towed from the fore end stud, as we will do, um, with the mast used only really for um, occasional, occasional hauling. It is easier to bow haul the boat actually from the mast. The bit on top, the steel bit sticking up, is called the Luby. <laughs> Side cloths in a working boat, vital. The, the whole assembly is pretty well watertight. Not literally so, it leaks a little bit in motor boats, but generally it's pretty watertight. And you can see here the way in which the uh, side cloth is battened down, nailed and glued to the gunnel with the cloth then secured over the top plank and tied tight so it pulls down the top plank and it pulls up the side cloth. So the total freeboard of the boat is actually up to the top of the side cloth. That's a pretty watertight, um, certainly splash tight assembly. And the top cloth over the top tied on with the top strings which are secured with these um, S hooks onto the um, eyes stapled to the gunnel. Traditionally the gunnel was oak, actually that is oak, that's Iroko nowadays. These boats, these boats were riveted, they continued to be riveted until at least the mid-50s, and very few boats were built after that, of course. Um, one of the weak points of all working boats is the rivets, or the rivet heads have worn off over the years, and one of the um, favourite failure modes in boats that are not properly maintained is to find the rivets popping out. That, of course, represents a hole, so it's generally speaking undesirable. Um, there are various ways of dealing with it. I don't anticipate it being a problem in these boats, but it certainly has been. So if you, if you see boats in the historic style with nice, prominent, well-formed rivets, it's not historic. It couldn't be. <laughs> Almost every boat has been re and I think that there are, are there any examples? I, I don't know of any. No. They've all had to be re -bottomed. They're all 70 years old. Uh, and we'll have a quick look at that inside the inside the hole that we'll go in in a moment. So the motor from the fore end on back is exactly the same as this. Um, looking at the outside of the motor, um, the engine hole clearly. Nuneaton's cabin was rebuilt five years ago, complete, and is a and is a reconstruction. Um, this cabin was put on in 1995. 
over the hill at Brawlston. It's that much longer than historically it would have been, so all that cargo space has been lost as a, um, a concession to, um, if you like, modern boating. We didn't actually do that, we bought the boat after the cabin had been put on, but not before thing. Um, having said which, actually, various assemblies were used by families at the back end of their boat to support family living. Did you pass me the shaft, I'll put that on the boat. Coming on back to this end, the tunnel hook. Ah, it's really stiff, that one still needs, still needs sorting. We'll see the use of these things um, later. Um, answer pin coming back to the alum, supported by its pintle, top and bottom. So, a favourite way of, of um, holding up your boating day is to rub the alum of the butty over a shallow patch, it pops out of the pintle, hangs down on its chain, which is designed to prevent it just floating away in the back. Called a jumping uh, chain. You, you can steer a butty with the alum not in its pintles, but it's guinea a minute. Not recommended for more than that. Ten minutes, I, no. think, I think, <laughs> to get you to the bank. So if if you do find the butty, which would be unlikely today, I think, if you do find the butty bumping along the bottom, the thing to watch for is the alum popping out of its pin. And the favourite thing is going downhill in a lock. That's yes. the other place you can. And we'll try that in if a it minute. washes back, but um, that is why you have this piece of string here. So when you you pull it round in a lock and then. Uh, just tie it over like like so so uh, you keep you can keep it uh, clear of the sill as the boat drops down uh, you shouldn't actually run back but uh, in some locks like on the Birmingham Canal navigations they're very short and in order to get a, a butty in and out of the locks you have to pull this right over and have a stern right up against the, uh, the top sill so you can get the bottom gate open. How, how long are these boats? 72 foot. 72, 72 foot. Yeah. That's the, the maximum, isn't it? Yes, and the Birmingham, the Birmingham boats were, were built for 70 foot, so you'd get that. Oh, so they're fitting into locks for yeah. which they were never designed. Yeah. yeah. Because, of course, these were built for the bigger locks of the Grand Union. And the shape of this on the bottom under the water? Is that it's, a big, it's a big triangle. That, yeah. um, <laughs> the idea of that is that uh, as a boat sink, sinks in the water, yeah. more of the blade, a bigger proportion of the blade, goes down with it. Yeah. So uh, that you get more leverage. Right. With the, uh, is it sort of parallel at the bottom? It's a parallel it? at the yeah. bottom, yeah. yeah. And talking about going down on the water, these, these boats, like all boats, have an immersion figure. How far down on the water do they go when loading? And you get one inch increase in the draft of these boats per ton loaded. Right. One inch and you can inch. see from the marks on the side of here um, how how deep they've been in in recent years since they were last painted. Um, how, they, how deep is that sitting now? That there's about you've got about a foot eighteen inches draft on this. Is that all? Mm. Yeah. And when the boats are loaded, when they're loaded properly, and that's a, that's a routinely loaded yeah. mark. Yeah. Yeah. And if you get them properly, properly, properly... If you had it down to this guard, there'd be 35 tonnes. Yeah. But you wouldn't get very far these days with it. No. Years ago, they used to go... When these boats were new, uh, I've heard boatmen say that they've gone Brentford to Wellingborough with 65 tonnes on, these big boats. But uh, I think they, I th still think they struggled in one or two places. When you say struggle, in, in what sense? In just the weight? It, just it, just it the, the motor pulling it? Or no, it's because the canal not deep enough. Yeah, it's too near the top. Yeah. They were churning up the bottom, and uh, um, the worst thing really is bridge holes, um, because people will dump rubbish in bridges. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll drive over with a car and then just hurl stuff in. It's, it's much more fun doing that than going to the tip. And um, the, uh, so consequently, places which years ago um, you could, boats could go through full tilt and no problem at all, now, which because they were in the depths of the country, now in the middle of Milton Keynes. And yeah. almost every bridge hole in Milton Keynes is yeah. full of rubbish. You 